Good morning. Good morning, church. Welcome to worship. As you are filing in, I'd like to encourage you to direct your attention forward as we prepare our hearts and minds for worship this morning. Good morning. Great day to be in the house of the, go of the Lord, isn't it? My name's Stephen Fools. I'm going to give you the announcements now. Um, I'd like to welcome all, everyone, especially the visitors. Um, remind everyone to sign the red book and pass the uh, paper to the, in the, to the aisle in the collection plate during collection time. The church is equipment site location for the East Texas Food Bank Summer Food Program for children 18 and younger. Monday through Friday, July the 1st to, through August the 9th, 11.30 a.m. to 1 p.m. in the celebration room. Call Martha at the church office for dates available if you wish to volunteer or if you need more information. This Wednesday, there will be uh, no adult Bible study and no choir practice. Um, I don't know if the youth are meeting. The youth are meeting. So plan accordingly on that. Um, Joseph uh, may want to talk to you about uh, recruiting volunteers for VBS, which will be July the 29th through the 31st. You going to do that now? All right. Joseph needs volunteers for um, VBS, <laughs> which will be July the 29th through the 31st. So if you're interested in that, talk to Joseph about it. Um, are there any other announcements? All right. Uh, UM Army video is about to queue up. Pete's going to hit that thing and hit the button, and we're going to see what happened at UM, UM Army. Thank you. 
It's a mama singing songs about the Lord. It's a daddy spending family time the world says he cannot afford. These simple moments change the world. It's a pastor at a tiny little church. Forty years of loving on the broken and the hurt. These simple moments change the world. Dream small. Don't buy the lie, you've got to do it all. Just let Jesus use you where you are. One day at a time, live well. Loving God and others as yourself. Find little ways where only you can help. With His great love, a tiny rock can make a giant fall. Dream small. special needs these simple moments change the world of course there's nothing wrong with bigger dreams just don't miss the minutes on your way to bigger things no cause these simple moments change the world so dream small don't buy the lie you've got where you are one day at a time live well loving God and others as yourself find little ways where only you can help with his great love a tiny rock can make a giant fall so dream small keep loving keep serving keep listening keep learning keep praying keep So dream small Don't buy the lie, you've got to do it all Just let Jesus use you where you are One day at a time, live well Loving God and others as yourself Find little ways where only you can help With His great love A tiny rock can make a giant Them all. So dream small, dream small. Mm -hmm. Joseph, did you want to say something about UM Army? Okay, well, allow me then. Um, I am super proud of these kids. They do tremendous work, and they're very dedicated, and uh, they're just God's gift, you know. So I'm real proud of them. So I think we should all give them another hand. If uh, there are no other announcements, let's uh, stand, greet our neighbors, and pass the peace.
Okay, church, encourage you to find your way back to your pew. I know we could do the passing of the peace for 45 minutes if we wanted to. Um, but invite you as you make your way back to remain standing as we sing our opening hymn, Maker in Whom We Live. Please remain standing and join me in the historic affirmation of faith known as the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, 
the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. And now, church, it is time for our community prayer. What is going on in your lives? What is going on in the life of the church? What's going on in our world today that we need to be thinking about, we need to be praying for? Uh, and if you have a prayer request, I think somebody will come by with a mic uh, and we can get you on the live stream as well. So what do we need to pray for? Let's pray for the, uh, the youth leaders, uh, for Joseph and Pete to get some rest, for our youth to get some rest and rejuvenated after a long week. Susan to also get some rest. <laughs> Marty, I saw your wife's look just then, and I was like, man, if I don't say her name as well. Especially Susan to get some rest this morning. <laughs> Thank you, Susan. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Safety, Susan. What else do we need to be praying for? Our leaders, our political leaders. Yep. Absolutely country is moving into a, an election, uh, and we need to be praying for all sides, for cool heads, and for light, for light to shine on this land. Anything else? Yes, Susan. He is uh, in rehab, um, but he's had a blood transfusion and some other things going on, so I just pray for him. Okay, this is Marty's father. Yeah, got it. Okay, well, I have broken the pen. No? Anything else? Let's pray. Uh, Father God, we do come to you this morning giving you our first fruits of the week. But we confess that we come into this space by carrying a lot of things. Uh, things that we are anxious about, things that we are celebrating, things that we are worried about and maybe even afraid of. And so, Lord, we pray for all the things that were said and all the things that we kept to ourselves. Lord, may you reign in them so that we may now worship you undistracted in the knowledge that there is no better place than in your hands to place our prayers and concerns. All these things we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
All right. So we have some more kids. All right. We are here. We survived. Barely. All right. So, um, yes, I'll share just a little bit here about our um, UM Army a little bit. Um, we had about 25 students, about 13 adults. Uh, it was a smaller camp, um, but they were able to accomplish about 11 projects. And two of those projects had a lot of little pieces to it. Uh, so it was a very successful camp, very exciting camp. Um, it was wonderful to see uh, churches from three different areas of Texas you know, all come together under the same idea of serving and the same idea of, of, of worshiping together. And so it was, it was wonderful to watch and to see. And that's always something that is special to me uh, when we get to see everybody coming as one. And so um, part of the camp was amazing. There were still some parts that, you know, maybe not so amazing. Um, kids' bathrooms, I don't know what that's about, but there's something, I avoid those bathrooms for a reason. Um, feel sorry if we had to clean those. Um, you know, but there, there's little things that happen. And, and you see, here's the thing, though. Even those little things can, can be good sometimes. You see, you guys are fixing to go to a children's church if you guys go. And, and, and we're going to, Jennifer's going to kind of share about um, the sweetness of an apple starts from a poisonous seed. Do you know that? If you didn't know that, great, because I'm going to leave it to her to tell you how. But here's the thing. Even in those moments that may not be amazing, great things come from them. We had some kids at this mission trip who have never touched a drill. We had kids at this camp who has never used a circular saw. As far as I know, everybody came back with ten fingers. A couple of bruises from dropping the saws on themselves, but um, they did come back with all their fingers, with all their body parts, uh, but it was those moments, those scary, fear-filled moments that, you know what? They were able to make some projects. There's a lady who was on hospice that has not been out of her house in the past two months because she can't get out. And they were able to put a ramp for her to be able to at least get out and experience the sunshine for the first time in a long time. It's little things like that. Even in those feared moments, you guys did some amazing things. And, and, and here's the thing. The small things that we are afraid of. School is fixing to start. Did you know that? How many weeks until school starts? Three. Hundred, ah, you only hope. Three, right? To you, to you, that, that's not a good thing. But guess what? Those parents, it's amazing. But here's the thing. Even at school, great things can happen. And so I hope when you guys go to Children's Church today, you guys get the idea that, that not everything is just as awful as it seems. Would you pray with me real quick, and then we'll go to Children's Church. Dear God, thank you for giving us the opportunities to see you. We may not see you all the time. But you were always present. And we thank you for that. In your name, amen. Thank you, Joseph and Jennifer. As the uh, children go back to their families or off to Children's Church, I'd like to invite our ushers to uh, prepare to come forward for our time of offering. Um, always we say that uh, giving is an act of worship. It's a part of our worship. It's a way that we acknowledge uh, that all that we have is really God's first, and it puts the first things in its proper place. And so now, let's continue to worship God in our time of offering.
Our sermon hymn this morning is, O oh Jesus, I Have Promised, hymn number 396. We're going to sing verses 1, 2, and 4. Today's scripture reading is from the book of 1 Timothy, Timothy chapters 1, verses 12 through 16, and 1 Timothy chapters 3, verses 8 through 10, and it goes like this. I am grateful to Christ Jesus, our Lord, who has strengthened me, because he judged me faithful and appointed me to his service, even though I was formerly a blasphemer, a persecutor, and a man of violence. But I received mercy because I had acted ignorantly in unbelief, and the grace of our Lord overflowed for me with the faith and love and love that are in Christ Jesus. The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am the foremost. But for that very reason, I received mercy, so that in me, as the foremost, Jesus Christ might display the utmost patience, make me an example to those who would come to believe in him for eternal life. And chapter 3, verses 8 through 10 is... Deacons likewise must be serious, not double-tongued, not indulging in much wine, not greedy for money. They must hold fast to the mystery of the faith with a clear conscience, and let them first be tested. Then, if they prove themselves blameless, then let them serve as deacons. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thank you. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Peyton. Thank you, choir and Gail. And good morning, church. My name is Reverend Thomas Harper, and today we begin a new sermon series. I've entitled, Letters to Timothy, Good Practical Advice. Last week, we wrapped up our summer series on the Ten Commandments by talking about the dangers of a society that is constantly trying to keep up with the Joneses. 
that when we seek after an idealized image of something, we will never fully be satisfied because what we are chasing after is not real. This morning, we're going to start a new series by focusing on our character. Let's pray. Father God, open us up. Open us up that we would receive your word today. Holy Spirit, I ask now that you would speak through me, or if need be, in spite of me, that we would know you more. And by knowing more about who you are, Lord, would that teach us then more about who we really are as your people. All these things we pray in your name, Lord Jesus. Amen. And so this sermon series is going to go through the first and second letters of Timothy found in the New Testament. Over the next five weeks, I'm going to lift up a theme that Paul uses to teach the younger Timothy. The good, practical, spiritual wisdom that Paul instills in the younger Timothy. But before we do that, uh, I'm going to say a few words about who Paul and Timothy were, just in case you are unfamiliar. Paul was originally known as Saul. He was vehemently against the Christ movement in the beginning. Acts chapter 9 verse 1 said that Paul was breathing all sorts of malicious threats against followers of Christ. That he went to the high priest and got authority to arrest anybody who was followers of the way. Paul would literally go as Saul from house to house and drag Christians out of their homes in order to arrest them. Saul was at the stoning of Stephen, the first Christian martyr. And so, in the beginning, this Roman Pharisee in Saul attacked the Christian movement. That was, of course, until his road to Damascus experience. On the road to Damascus, Saul sees Jesus, gets knocked off his donkey on his back, and is blinded as he hears Christ say, Saul, Saul, why have you forsaken me? And Saul goes to Damascus in the city and sits there blind for two days. Until Ananias comes, sent by God to baptize Saul, where his eyes are both physically and spiritually opened again. And then he spends time learning with the other disciples before God gives him a new name and a new calling in life. His name turns from Saul to Paul, and he has been given the mission to share the gospel of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles. So that's Paul, who was Timothy. We know a little less about Timothy, but we know that Paul met Timothy on his second missionary journey, that he became a missionary partner and a traveling companion with Paul along with Silas. According to the book of Acts, Saul or Paul became a mentor to Timothy, instilling wisdom on the younger man. And Timothy would one day go on to become the very first bishop of Ephesus. In Paul's second letter to Timothy, he talks about the great foundational faith that has been instilled in Timothy's life. Quote, I am reminded of your sincere faith, which first lived in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice, and I am persuaded now lives in you. I really like the pairing of Paul and Timothy because on the one hand, you have the dramatic conversion experience. And on the other, the simple homegrown faith. Back in my youth ministry days, when I would have a student come up to me all concerned that I haven't had this big emotional conversion experience to Christ, I would tell them about the story of Paul and Timothy. That sometimes God has to knock somebody down on their back to get their attention. But other times, by the grace of God, the faith is just kind of all around you. It was in your grandmother. 
It was in your father. And now it's in you. Just like with Timothy. But I also like Paul and Timothy because it's a reminder to us of the importance of spiritual mentor relationships in our life. Think about it. When in your life have you had a good spiritual mentor? When have you been a mentor to someone else? I would venture to guess that it is in those one-on-one mental relationships that your faith in Christ and your discipleship growth has happened more so than anything else. More so than the sermons that you hear the pastor preach on Sunday mornings, even the Bible studies that you go to. It is through mentor relationships that faith and discipleship really grows. And these relationships come and go throughout our lives, but I would encourage you to be on the lookout for them. Because you never know what God might have left to teach you. And you never know how God might use you to instill something into someone else that can grow far greater than you possibly could have imagined. And really, that's what this sermon series is all about, the mentor relationship between Paul and Timothy and the good practical advice that Paul instilled in the younger Timothy that would eventually lead Timothy to go on to become the very first bishop of the church of Ephesus. The first theme that we are lifting up today is focus on character. Do I need a mic? Get rid of this one? Yeah. Okay. Okay. How's that? Y'all can hear me? Good. So the first thing that we're going to do today is focus on character. In the second of the two scriptures that Peyton read this morning, Paul talks about the importance for Christians to focus on their character when it comes to spiritual leadership. Now, it is tempting for Christians, and especially for Christian leaders, to want to act like we are Christians, to want to play the part, to want to look like we have it all together, rather than focus on the intentional character-building, discipleship, faith-building moments in our life that builds our character. And if we're being honest, we all are tempted to do that. We're all tempted to look pious towards other people. Pastors know that better than anybody else. We want to look like we know what we're talking about. We want to look like we have it all together. But here's the thing. No matter how spiritual you look or how good you are at looking spiritual on the outside, it is not what is going on on the outside, but what is going on on the inside with your character that really matters. Because here's the thing about character. You will inevitably reap what you sow. And so people cannot fake their character to others for very long. Who you are when no one else is watching will inevitably be who you become later on in life. And so how do you build your character? How do you focus on your character? By focusing on the little things rather than on the big ones. So at my previous church, my youngest daughter, Alyssa, attended our Kingsgate Christian Day School there at the church. And oftentimes outside of my office, I could hear the kids going up and down the halls. And the teachers asking the children the question, now class, are we making good choices today? Be sure that you're making good choices. And for a while there, when I would pick up Alyssa at the end of the day, she would either come running up to me and say, Daddy, Daddy, guess what? I got rewarded today because I made good choices. And sometimes she would come up to me with her head hanging down and say, Daddy, I didn't have a very good day today. I didn't make good choices. 
And as her dad, I would take that opportunity to say, now, baby, at the end of each day, which is better, making bad choices or making good ones? You see, we want to instill in our children the importance of making good choices every day. We want them to learn that good choices lead to positive results. So that they will then go on later in life and make good choices on their own. That they will learn to live into their freedom well. But the things we taught our kids when they were kids are still true in our own life as adults. Now that we are adults, it is the everyday little good choices that make all the difference. Because here's the thing, we like to think about character as the big decisions. You know, you know those life moments where that sometimes like this is going to define who I am in the next decision of my life. There is no going back after I do this or do that. I will be this or that person. Like, would I steal if no one was looking? Would I cheat on my spouse if the opportunity presented itself? Would I lie if I knew that I would get away with it? What would I do in those big character-defining moments? But here's the thing. We think it is the big moments that define us when really it's not. It is the everyday little moments that define us. It is the little good choices that we make every single day that establish our character, establish who we are. It, it is the choices that don't seem that big in the moment that start to form the grooves of our life that we just fall into the habit of. And we find out that when we get to those big moments, we find out that we're not actually making the decision in that moment. We have already made the decision 7,000 little moments before that. Because that is who we are. That is who we have become as we have developed our character. So Paul warns Timothy and us not to worry too much about what you look like on the outside. Don't play the part. Be who you are. Inform who you are, not in the big moments, but in the everyday, the day-to-day -day little choices. Because if you sow discipleship seeds in your life and in the life of others, you will inevitably reap fruit that goes on into eternity. Practice making good choices in the everyday little things that will build a character that is immune to what other people would describe as life-defining moments. It's not even a decision. I've already made that decision because I know who I am in Christ. Next week. Paul's going to talk about the importance of developing relationships. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you so much for the people that you have placed in our lives that have come along as a spiritual mentor to us and shown us deeper glimpses of your love, that have shown us a better insight into who you really are. And God, help us to be on the lookout for those whom you might have us do the same in their lives. And then, Lord, help us to not really worry so much about what we look like, but about how we are developing our heart towards you. Because if our yes is yes, 
and our no is no, we need not worry about the situation we find ourselves in. We just simply be who we are in you. In your name we pray, Lord Jesus. Amen. I'd like you to stand for our closing hymn, I Know Whom I Have Believed. Would you sing with us? Church, remember that it's really not what's on the outside, how good you look, how much you have it all together, or how pious you come across, but what's going on in your heart that really matters, and that all things are known to God. And so just work on your heart, and everything else comes out naturally from that. And go forth into this world and share the love of Christ with a world that so desperately needs to know it. And might use you in ways that instills the faith of another generation that you have never been able to see. But the kingdom will reap the rewards of. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and all of God's people, set it together. Amen. Amen.